Hey, welcome back to The Naked Golfer. I'm your host, Greg Rowley. Today we're going to talk about cause and effect in the golf swing, uh, learning how to read your shots, and understanding physics. I know sometimes that scares people away, but there's things that you need to understand that take place in the golf swing that dictate the outcome of every shot. And once you understand that, you can sustain lasting improvement. Uh, I think what happens a lot of time is people memorize the golf swing almost like it's a dance step, and they just mimic a motion that they, they see, but don't understand the physical processes that A, occur in the body, and B, occur in the flight of the ball, and work those things together to understand what happened, what went wrong, what went right, uh, so you can sustain improvement, you can repeat a motion, uh, and more importantly, maybe save a sinking ship when you're on the golf course and things just don't seem to be going right. We've all had those days where you can just scratch your head all you want, but not figure out how or why or whatever, and sometimes it's just uh, it's, it's a hopeless feeling. I, I think you might know what I'm talking about. So um, the first of those forces of nature, the physics behind the golf swing, is what we call club path. And that's the direction that the club swings. If you had a big paintbrush and you swung that paintbrush across the ground, the stripe you would make is an indication of your club path. So it can be to the left of your target, it can be right down the line at your target, or it can be to the right of your target. We call that inside to out, down the line, or outside to in. Your club path is largely determined by your posture and your stance. And the one thing that's most important that you'll see the guys on tour that they do this perfectly, the club shaft should be perpendicular to your spine at the address position. Should form a 90 degree angle between my spine and my club path. Where most amateurs go wrong here is they will extend the club or their arms too far from their body. Uh, gravity should always tell your arms where to hang. Uh, and at that point, the club shaft in your spine should achieve that perpendicular position. It's real common to see people with a bad grip and their arms too far from their body. Uh, you have no chance to hit a good shot from that position. Uh, your club face position at impact, combined with your club path, produce the shape of the shot. So your club path can be open, it can be square, or it can be closed. So that would be open, it could be square, or that can be closed in relationship to your club path. Uh, what happens is when the ball has reached its apex or halfway through its flight, uh, the spin that the club face puts on the ball takes over and the ball will bank left or right from there. Uh, so where it immediately jumps is an indication of your path. Where it spins to from there is an indication of your club face. This is something super important to uh, get the hang of, but it's also something easy to practice. You can do this in your backyard, uh, in your living room watching the game or American Idol or whatever, uh, or at the golf course at the practice range. When the club is parallel to the ground, a couple important things need to happen. The butt of the club should point at your target, and the toe of the club should point in the air. Uh, slightly closed is very technically perfectly correct. Uh, toe in the air is good. Club face down is closed, that's a hook. Club face up, that's open, and that's a slice. Uh, so that's just something you can groove a good habit by stopping right there and monitoring that position uh, over and over and over again. You can never do that too many times. Club face position is largely, if not completely, determined by your grip. And almost all amateurs have an incorrect grip. Uh, what needs to happen is the club needs to be leveraged in between your forefinger and the butt of your left hand. That's called your hypothenar eminence. You'll be tested on that in a minute. That's a big word for the fat meaty pad at the base of your hand. Uh, it needs to be leveraged in there so that the weight of the club actually holds it in there. So throughout your swing, leverage is holding the club in your hand, not muscular force. Uh, most amateurs hold the club in their left hand in this position, which requires a grip uh, to hold that in there, and that tenses up these muscles all the way in through your upper torso, and there's just no way to swing a club quickly or generate club head speed with muscles uh, being used that shouldn't be. Uh, so grip largely is determined by the position of the club head or the grip in your hand in relationship to that. Uh, the right hand is hugely important as well. You've got your, your radius and your ulna bone and most amateurs grip the club in a position where their hand is on top of the club like this. And what happens is these two bones are now crisscrossed. 
if the right hand is underneath the club like it should be, now these two bones are parallel. And so since they're parallel, they slide into my backswing in a position like this so they can deliver maximum velocity back to the ball. If they have to uncross, they must then recross. And doing that uncrossing and recrossing, again, just slows the whole process down. So you lose speed. Um, so club path determines where the ball jumps. Club face determines where the ball spins. And there's two or three others. Uh, club head speed. That's one. That's just the speed of the club determines how far the ball goes. That's just simple physics. Uh, that's largely determined by, we call this width, W-I-D-T-H, width of your arc, length of your arc, and then doing all that with the right processes in place so you generate torque. The other is your angle of attack. If you have an upright swing, you will dig deeper divots and hit higher shots. If you have a shallower swing, you'll make shallower divots and hit lower, uh, a lower trajectory shot. And then the fifth and final, we call those the ball flight laws, is the centeredness of contact. Uh, the closer to the sweet spot of the club you strike the ball, the better the outcome of the shot. That's pretty simple to understand. We've all hit those miserable shots that in the, in the heel, in the toe, fat, thin, high, low, they just feel terrible. You feel it in your hands, and sometimes it even hurts your teeth when you hit it so bad. Uh, but the centeredness of contact is the other of those things that determine the outcome of every shot. So understanding those things, centeredness of contact, angle of attack, club head speed, club face position, and club path. Those five things determine the outcome of every shot. You cannot improve until you understand that. So you can sustain improvement, you can take instruction, you can apply it to what you see and work backwards from that. And so when you're on the golf course and things, you're just having a terrible day, you can write a sinking ship by working backwards and reading your shots. And it might look something like this. Blue, 42, it's hot. Hey, welcome back. It's almost time for another football season, which for some of us means we have to put the clubs away for the winter, unfortunately. But there are some things you can do and pay attention to this weekend while you're watching the game that will definitely help your golf swing. Footwork is very important in any dynamic athletic motion, just like a quarterback stepping into a throw or a kicker striding into a kick. Golf is no different. What happens a lot of the time in the golf swing, amateur players tend to turn their toe out towards the target, losing balance and losing power. Instead, try this. It's a perfect living room lesson to groove better footwork. Place a tee on your toe and learn to make balanced half swings without knocking the tee over. So practice this tip either at home or at the golf course and I promise you'll have improved footwork and better balance. Next time, we'll talk about golf and basketball and why making 10-foot putts is just like shooting free throws.